Okay guys, here I am at Brimfield day two. I actually uh, got here kind of late. I was going to garage sales all morning and I got here about you know, two hours later than I usually do. It's a Saturday, this place is an absolute zoo. So I don't have really high hopes of finding too many rare finds that haven't been picked through already, but it's Brimfield and the place is huge and you never know. See what I get. Okay, so I uh, got a whole bunch of $1 comic books, some really good deals. Now I'm in one of the smaller markets here and uh, that was not open the other day. So new people, let's see what they got. Okay guys, that's a wrap on day two of Brimfield. It's about lunchtime, it's really hot out. I'm stuck in traffic trying to get home. I'm tired, hungry, sweaty, but I got a very impressive haul of comic books. I got modern, copper, bronze, and some Silver Age books, all for incredible deals. So I can't wait to get home and show you guys what I got whenever I get out of this traffic and actually get home. So there you go guys, that was day two at Brimfield for me. As I mentioned in my last video, Brimfield Flea Market is the largest flea market in the United States, at least the largest traditional flea market in the country. It comes to town three times a year in May, July, and September for six days each. Uh, for me, this September, I had to go two days simply because there's just too much ground to cover. And even then, over two days, I still probably missed a third of the vendors, maybe even more. And the ones I did see, really, I only had time to peek in, see if they have a short box, and move on. It's that big. So if you are in the Northeastern United States and you're into antiques especially, 
Brimfield is seriously, you know, a pilgrimage I think you need to make at least once in your lifetime. I'll make sure to put a link down in the description to the website so you can plan your trip there for 2023. So you may have noticed that I didn't actually have that much footage from my day there, certainly less than some of my other flea market picks. And there's a couple reasons for that. The first one is that I found a whole bunch of long boxes of $1 books, and I got a whole bunch of them, a whole bag full, and I just had too much weight. It was awkward for me to kind of take out the camera constantly while I was carrying around this big bag of comic books. The other reason is that I was moving really, really fast, and it was the second to last day of the market, and you can usually get some pretty good deals. So I was moving quickly from vendor to vendor, and sort of trying to like wheel and deal and get the best bargains. And it just made it really difficult when I was conversing with these people to take out the camera every single time. It takes a little bit of pressure off the seller as well. That being said, I still ended up with 40 comic books. And the last couple ones, the best ones I got, I did not have any footage for. So you'll have to stay tuned to see the last couple I got. So let's jump right into it. One of the first places I went to had a whole bunch of comic books in dollar boxes. Now, usually... I don't find anything good in them. You know, you see it in a lot of my videos, you just end up passing over it, most of it's junk. But this was different. There was a lot of really good stuff in these boxes, certainly things that I thought were worth more than a dollar. Not only that, I kind of got a big bundle of them. I think I ended up with like 35 comic books and I only paid $25. So everything I'm about to show you, I got for less than a dollar. So let's go with the really easy ones. I'll work my way up to the better ones, of course. Uh, first one up is Marvel Team Up uh, Official Index to Marvel team up Spider-Man. Again, this is not even a real comic book. It's just basically uh, a history of all Spider-Man team up books. Um, and this one just, I thought was cool. It had Man-Thing on the front and it had, you know, Heroes for Hire with Spidey on the back. That's it. It's a cool cover. It's not a real comic book. Moving on. Next up, I have X-Factor number 13, not a key. The reason I got this one is because my sister, who is homesick right now, she loves Jean Grey. She definitely liked sort of this Marvel Girl X-Factor aesthetic of Jean Grey, this costume, so I'm going to send this to her to cheer her up. Next up, I have the Incredible Hulk number 196. This is from 1976, and it's not really a big key or anything. The reason I got it is because it's a team-up between Hulk and Abomination. I thought it was neat. Again, less than a buck, sure. Next up, I have Secret Wars number six. So this is a really cool cover with all the villains on it. Everyone knows Secret Wars is coming to the MCU in the form of an Avengers movie in a couple of years. I have the whole series of Secret Wars and I've actually been trying to fill in another collection of Secret Wars just with like dollar bins and getting them cheap. So whenever I find a Secret Wars comic book for pretty cheap, I grab it and this is a great cover. Now I have it. Next up, we have three Ghost Rider themed comic books. We have... Avengers number 214. This is from 1981. Uh, I just thought it was a cool cover. It basically shows the Avengers trying to capture the Ghost Rider. Thought that was neat. Right after that, I have Ghost Rider number 68. This is from 1981. This one is a key. It's actually a retelling of the story of Johnny Blaze, his origin. You see Johnny Blaze on the front there. You see Mephisto in the back, or Zarathos, one of the two. It looks like Mephisto to me. Um, this comic book actually can go for a little bit of money, but this one's in pretty poor shape. But still, it's a retelling of his origin, and I thought it was pretty neat. <laughs> and speaking of bad condition, this one kind of bums me out. This is Marvel Team Up number 15, Spider-Man and Ghost Rider. This is from 1973, guys. This is the first team up between Spider-Man and Ghost Rider. In its own right, this is a great comic book, a great key. The art is fantastic. Um, again, first meetup between the two. Obviously, it was in good shape. It's pretty beat up. I knew that when I got it, but I was hoping, hey, you know, for less than a dollar, essentially, maybe it's worth a little bit of money. I certainly wanted my collection. I didn't realize how bad a shape it was in until I got home and looked at it, and uh, I knew the spine was bad, but what I didn't realize was that there are one, two, three, four, five, at least five staples in this, and the whole thing is sleeved in scotch tape. So this comic book is probably worth, you know, the 80 cents or so that I actually paid for it. Um, but still, it's a wicked cool comic book. This is a very big candidate to go up my wall, at least behind me. I don't feel bad, you know, if it gets sunlight on it or something. But really cool comic book. Too bad it wasn't in better shape. Okay, so for those of you who watched my Brimfield Day 1 video, you saw that I found this book for a couple of dollars. This is Squadron Supreme number 1. It's part of a 12-part miniseries from 1985-1986. And, you know, again, these are sort of the Marvel knockoff of the Justice League. And uh, in my last video, I said, you know, I was hoping I could find the rest of the series, you know, diving through dollar bins, you know, at a later point in time. Well, I didn't have to wait for long because when I went back to Brimfield in this dollar bin, I found issues 2 through 12, all of them. 
So I was able to complete this entire set, and um, if I was actually figuring it out, I think I spent you know probably a total of ten dollars for the whole set. I think it's pretty great. Like I said in my last video, I think the Squadron Supreme has a decent chance of showing up in the MCU. You know, with all the sort of multiverse storylines going on. I think they're a really cool, fun team, and I'm very happy to finish an entire limited series like this, especially for such a cheap price. So, very cool. Very happy to have this. Okay, next up we have some 90s chrome goodness. Um, for those of my generation who grew up collecting in the 1990s, you know, they were producing comic books a mile a minute. Everything was a number one. Everything had a shiny cover, either chrome or foil. One of the reasons it sort of bankrupted Marvel. Um, you know, and they would make chrome covers like this. Generation X number one. This is from 1994. And this was to get, you know, 14-year-olds like me to buy it. It worked. I spent my hard-earned lunch money on this comic book right here. Uh, this shows a new generation of young X-Men. We have some, you know, veterans like Jubilee, but also lots of new characters like Chamber, Skin, Husk. I see Cinch there. And it was a team led by Emma Frost and Banshee. Uh, fun fact, in uh, the mid to late 90s, they tried making a television show out of it. I, they, I think they only made the pilot, but yeah, look it up. It's pretty pretty wild. So yeah, wraparound foil or chrome cover. Really cool. I mean, it's a cool looking book, even though it's not worth that much. But to me, for less than a dollar, I'm happy to have it. Next up, we have X-Men Alpha, number one. So this is from 1995, and this is the uh, first iteration of the... Age of Apocalypse X-Men. Essentially, it's a future timeline where Apocalypse has won. And this group of X-Men is led by Magneto, so they're meaner, they're grittier, they're all kind of jerks. Um, and there's a lot of really cool variants of the X-Men that came out of this. My personal favorite, no surprise, as a Nightcrawler fan, we have Kurt Darkholm, essentially a version of Nightcrawler that was raised by his mother Mystique, Raven Darkholm. So instead of having like the wholesome, good 616 version of Nightcrawler, we have a straight-up jerk who just, like, kills people with his teleportation powers. Um, ends up becoming, a like, an anti-hero in his own right. But really cool wraparound foil cover. There's a lot of really cool variants of the X-Men from this, you know, imprint. I actually kind of like this book. But, yeah, it's chrome. It still looks cool. Next up, we have the Fantastic Four 2099. This is from 1996. Unlike the earlier uh, versions of the 2099 characters that had those iconic foil covers, um, this one, they went full chrome. You know, I guess foil had fallen out of fashion and chrome was now like the new thing in 94, 95, 96. Another wraparound cover. I have all the number one 2099s. The only one really worth anything is Spider-Man, but I actually don't have Fantastic Four 2099. So uh, I'm happy to have this and add it to my collection. So last but certainly not least of these sort of foil chrome fun covers um, is Guardians of the Galaxy number 25. This is a foil cover with a big foil Galactus on it. Again, listen guys, say what you will, but I showed this to my son and he thought this was the coolest looking comic book of all time. So um, it's not worth anything. It's not a, a key or anything like that. Um, but to the sentiment of a small child um, or even a big child like me, there's something cool about having a big foil shiny Galactus on a comic book. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. It's just, it is, it's cool. <sighs> Jack Kirby is rolling over in his grave right now. It's so stupid. Okay, we're still in the dollar bin category. Uh, the books are getting slightly better now. Next up, we have Wonder Man number one. This is from 1991. This is his second solo series that has come out. And, um, you know, the rumors are everywhere that Wonder Man is coming to the MCU, might have his own Disney Plus series. In my opinion, he's probably the most prolific Avenger we have yet to see in the MCU. And again, this is some other, you know, more 90s, not very great stuff, but, you know, there might be a market for these if Wonder Man ever comes out. And this one here has a free poster inside. You know what? I actually didn't, I actually didn't check to see if the poster was in here. Let's look. Ooh, let's see. It's here. Look at that. Right? Cool. So yeah, um, you know, sort of a little minor spec buy. Again, I already own this comic book, um, but it's always good to have another one, especially one in good shape with the poster intact. So for a dollar, sure. Okay, so next up we have some New Mutants keys. First up is the New Mutants number 13. This is the first appearance of Doug Ramsey, later known as Cypher. Uh, Cypher's a pretty cool mutant. He has the ability to communicate with anything, and he's become more important in uh, contemporary comics in that he is like the main communicator with the island of Krakoa. So, New Mutants 13, first appearance of Cypher. 
People who have watched my show in the past know I like Bill Sienkiewicz painted covers, especially on all these New Mutants books. I've picked this book several times in the past. This is New Mutants number 18. This is the uh, first full appearance of Demon Bear and also the first full appearance of Warlock, the techno-organic alien guy who joins this team for a little bit. Uh, next up, this actually I got uh, in the tent next to the guy I pulled these from. This is the New Mutants number 26. I think this one cost me $2. And this is the first appearance of Legion, Charles Xavier's incredibly powerful son who has, you know, hundreds of personalities, you know, puts Moon Knight to shame. I already have one of these books, but Legion's a pretty cool character. I'm happy to have another one of these in my collection. Next up, we have an X-Factor key. So this is X-Factor number 15. This is the death of Angel. Now, actually, several bad things happen to Angel here, Warren Worling to the third. The book starts off with him getting his wings amputated by the U.S. government, because comics. And then at the end, when he's in his airplane, his airplane blows up. Everyone thinks he's dead. Of course, he's not. He is uh, taken by Apocalypse and turned into his age, Angel of Death and has his, you know, his whole new look comes out. He becomes Archangel in X-Factor number 24. So pretty cool little minor X-Factor key there. Okay, guys, uh, I was a 90s kid, uh, but even for those of you who didn't grow up in the 90s, you will recognize this book immediately. This is X-Men number one from 1991 uh, with iconic art by the legendary Jim Lee. Um, when this book came out, I mean, X-Men were gigantic. You know, this combined with the animated series that came out around the same time based on a similar iteration just catapulted them to like the top of the you know comic book world. Um, I was wicked into them as a kid, absolutely. And um, everybody knows that this is the most produced comic book of all time. They made multiple variant covers. I think four regular variant covers that all sort of grouped together or linked together into one image and then a wraparound cover that you could unfold showing that same image. Um, so yeah. So here we have, I think, uh, this is the B cover, but I also got the C, the D, and the, not one wraparound cover, but two wraparound covers. So I got all of them except for the Magneto cover. Listen, guys, uh, these aren't worth a lot of money. We know that, but they're worth more than a dollar. At least to me, they are. Um, you know, I basically spent probably, I don't know, like 75 cents in these each. So happy to have them, you know. At the very least, I will give them to my kids. These are a cool comic book, you know, to sort of kickstart a new collection. Um, so, yeah, I'm just happy to have them for less than a dollar. But let me know down in the comments if you think that these are worth less than a dollar, if you would have bought these, or if they're just, you know, the most produced comic book of all time. I should have just left them in the box. Let me know down in the comments. I think they're pretty cool to have for the price I got. So, all told, from those dollar boxes, I got 36 comic books. And the guy still gave me a deal, and I got them for $25. So, um, in its own right, pretty cool. But, you know, there's some good stuff in here. I got these X-Men number ones. Uh, I finished my Nightcrawler series. I finished my Squadron Supreme series. I got the Wonder Man one. I got a cool X-Factor key. Um, some really cool New Mutants keys. And some good 90s chrome goodness. Some pretty good ones in here. I think it's a pretty cool little haul, guys. So, getting away from the dollar boxes, I got to walk around a bit. And you kind of have to keep your eyes peeled because a lot of vendors, you know, they look like they have a certain aesthetic or a certain type of antique they sell. But you find comic books everywhere. So you really got to like look for boxes of old documents, of old newspapers. And sometimes you find short boxes. And that was the case. I found a short box in, you know, under a tent that really had no business. It was just like one of these things does not belong. And I went through it and there was some like okay stuff. But one of the books in there I had to have. This is West Coast Avengers number one. This is number one in a four-part series, and this is the first appearance of the West Coast Avengers. This is from 1984. The storyline is Hawkeye is basically trying to recruit a new team of Avengers on the West Coast of the United States. Um, it was the first sort of spin-off publication from the Avengers, the first like spin-off team. Um, and it's really cool. It was a great series because it really got to sort of highlight a lot of the Avengers that didn't really stand out on their own. You know, ones like Hawkeye, Mockingbird, Wonder Man, uh, and it was especially true of James Rhodes' uh, War Machine. So this is a really cool comic book. First appearance of the West Coast Avengers. I think they have a chance of showing up in the MCU at some point in time. Really cool. Really happy to have it. And I spent two bucks on it. Absolutely a great deal. Okay, so this next purchase is sort of a weird one. I went outside my comfort zone and I'm not very happy with my purchase. Clearly the comic books I like are ones from my childhood and ones that have comic book characters that I know from, you know, before I was born, from like the silver and bronze age. And I don't usually get into modern comic books and I definitely don't get into sort of the hot comic book of the week. I made an exception this time and I sort of 
regretted it immediately when I got home, but I'll show you what I mean. What I got was Paper Girls number one. So this is a 2015 book by Brian K. Vaughn. Um, I think a lot of people know that this book was really hot this summer because it was a new show uh, based on the series on Amazon. And, um, you know, I think it got okay reviews. Basically, it's about, you know, four paper girls in the 80s that end up accidentally traveling through time. I actually watched uh, a little bit of the first season. I never finished it. And I was able to get this book for $10. Actually, no, I got two of these books for $10. I know these books can go for like 20 bucks. Uh, at least they were this summer because, you know, this was the hot new thing. I was hoping I could sell one and keep one. Basically, I'd be getting one for free. Unbeknownst to me, two hours before I bought these comic books, Amazon canceled the show after one season. So, uh, these aren't nearly in as much demand. Now, I know they're shopping around the show to other streaming networks, and maybe it will have a second life somewhere, and these will be worth more. However, um, I think even getting these at $10 each, I would have a hard time, you know, getting my money back. And um, this is why I don't really get into the speculation market. Um, I was watching the show, so I don't mind having the book. Um, and looking through you know, one of them. But the fact I got the second one, I sort of regret it. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with these ones yet. So uh, let me know down in the comments, guys, if you think I got a good deal on these or if you would have passed on them. I can tell you right now, had I known that the show was canceled, I probably would have passed on them. <coughs> so last but certainly not least, for those of you who watched my Brimfield Day 1 video, you saw that I found a vendor who had lots of old gold and silver age comic books. And um, I was picking through boxes of, you know, like old Marvel and DC. And although there were a lot of comic books I was interested in, ultimately I only ended up with one. So that one back there, Fantastic Four number 73. Very happy with that purchase. But there were a couple of other books I was still interested in. And, you know, being the second to last day of the flea market, you know, you tend to get better deals towards the end of the flea market when people are getting ready to like pack up and leave. So I wanted to go back one last time and make some deals for some of the other comics I was interested in. However, the fact that I was there a few days earlier and I was filming at the time, I didn't want to sort of like, you know, intimidate him or, you know, make it difficult while I was wheeling and dealing. So I didn't take the camera out, but I will show you footage for them the first time I visited and uh, you can see which books I was interested in at the time. And um, I was able to pick out two comic books and make a fantastic deal with him. So, without further ado, here we go. The first one is the Fantastic Four number 58 from 1967 by Stan Lee, art by Jack Kirby. Awesome Kirby cover with uh, Doctor Doom right there on the front. Um, really cool book. Really happy to have this. I actually looked at it back in July as well. Um, you know, same thing. I think he had a little higher price than I was willing to pay for it based on his condition. It's actually in pretty good condition. It just has a little bit of spine damage. Um, you know, the staples are a little spooky, but... I think it's an awesome looking Jack Kirby book. Absolutely cool. Uh, the second book I got was Fantastic Four number 74. Another Stanley Jack Kirby book. Um, this one has Galactus, Silver Surfer, and this guy's actually called The Punisher. Uh, you know, not the uh, vigilante we all know and love. This is actually uh, an agent of Galactus called The Punisher. Um, this book just, you know, has an awesome, awesome, you know, color to it. It's, it's bright, you know, even these darker covers sometimes, you know, they, they really show their wear. This one actually looks great. It presents really well. However, the biggest issue is there is a spine split on it. I got this one because it presents well and it's such an awesome looking cover. So I think I got an amazing deal on these two comic books. I essentially got them for less than half of what he had as the sticker price on the back. Another way of looking at it is that I got this one discounted and this one was essentially free. So the price on the back of both of these was $80. Now, to put it in perspective of how good my haul was, I got these two comics, plus these two, plus this one, plus all of these dollar books, um, 40 comic books for $82. So I got all of these for about $2 each. I think I did pretty darn good, but let me know down in the comments how you think I did. Are these comic books worth picking up even in the condition that they're in? Did I make a huge mistake with the uh, Paper Girl comics? You know, let me know down in the comments. You can be brutal, it's fine. Um, let me know on the $1 books, you know, which ones of those jumped out to you as being clearly better than a dollar bin long box. Um, definitely let me know down in the comments, guys. I love engaging with all the commenters down there. You guys are absolutely great. 
Again, it's a highlight of my day to sort of uh, read all the feedback on this haul. So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed my footage from day two of Brimfield. I have to wait till next May for them to come back, but um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did like the video, uh, please go down and hit that like button and consider subscribing. Um, despite the fact that Brimfield's over, I still have more footage of more flea markets that I've gone to this fall that I can't wait to share with you. So in the meantime, keep looking for comic books in strange and unusual places, and I will see you next time at the flea markets and the garage sales. Thanks for watching.